And we're back. Um, it's January 9th, the first official day of CES um, on BrainChip's All Things AI podcast live from CES. Well, and we have our guest of the morning, Farshad Akbari, who's a senior platform architect at Infineon. Welcome, Farshad. Thank you. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're doing? Um, sure. Uh, Bob, I, I, I've been in the industry for about 31 years now. Um, I got involved with uh, artificial intelligence uh, fairly uh, 12 years ago. Um, and uh, we have been doing quite a lot of um, uh, software and then use case analysis uh, on in, in, in uh, AI space. And then uh, once I joined Infineon, um, I was responsible for uh, assessing the AI cap capabilities for the Infineon platforms. And uh, that uh, continues. And uh, right now I'm responsible for um, the definition of a strategy for uh, machine learning acceleration uh, for uh, Infineon platforms. That's excellent. And so a pretty long uh, history in AI, and it seems to be converging into uh, something bigger and better at the moment. Speaking of which, uh, CES 2024, what do you expect to see at uh, CES that's especially interesting to you and in the kind of furthering of AI? So um, this uh, all the time that I was uh, involved with AI, uh, we were basically looking at the activities uh, that uh, would um, uh, replace uh, humans uh, uh, in, in terms of hardware and software uh, combined. Um, I, I, I think it's time to actually see uh, the next step as, you know, how do we actually uh, extrapolate uh, what AI can do uh, to uh, 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 go be above and beyond uh, uh, replacing uh, human perception. Um, and um, I, I would like to see uh, what's involved here in, in, in terms of interpretation, in terms of uh, um, you know, GPTs, uh, the, uh, domain, uh, things that go a little bit beyond to, you know, whatever the, uh, the regular, uh, AI and machine learning has been, uh, for, for the past, uh, you know, the five or seven years, that's the peak of the activities. I mean, I think this is music to our ears, right? So really both our companies play closer to the edge, right? Which is the the factor that hasn't been as prominent before. Most of the machine learning AI uh, activity, especially being compute intensive has been done on the cloud, but for true proliferation of AI or AIoT, if you think, uh, we do need to get a lot more intelligence closer to the sensor, would you say? And how does Infineon kind of see that evolving? Yeah, I mean, there is there is this notion of the time critical AI uh, that uh, um, I was involved uh, in in my previous company, uh, and and that was a uh, automotive space uh, that uh, you don't really have the luxury of uh, using cloud uh, for for your computation. The decisions need to be made in in millisecond or or even less than that, uh, and. Uh, that's where we actually found out that the uh, uh, you know the edge AI is is actually very significant uh, and and uh, needs to be looked at very very uh, closely and and uh, because of the price range and because of the uh, you know the, the embedded uh, 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 na nature of the solution uh, these need to be small devices uh, so we're kind of defying the laws of nature that you know the, you need a big machine to do AI and stuff like that we have to have have the uh, uh, very small devices do big things, uh, do do a, a big classification, big, and, and then even decision making needs to be part of that platform. Um, so uh, that's uh, very important. I mean, I mean, Azure AI uh, has become a lot more important than the uh, uh, cloud, and cloud is is mainly uh, being assistive as, as opposed to uh, uh, the, the main uh, uh, mainstream. And that's that's well put, right? I mean, I think there's a big data problem and there's a little data problem. There's no big data without little data. And one of the the key challenges that we see, right? Automotive is a well understood. Well, let me not go that far. It is a uh, an area that has a, done a lot of work in this, 
but there are a lot of other sensor areas that are also trying to get more intelligent. And at the edge, some of the problems are that the data sets are not as vetted or as clear. So the idea of a, a smart edge platform that learns as it goes along seems to be gaining traction. Would you? Oh, agree? absolutely. I, I'm, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm imagining uh, even already uh, the uh, back propagation is is uh, has become kind of a, a thing of a past. I mean, you have to learn as you go, uh, and uh, not only learn it but uh, be generative about it and and uh, produce results. Uh, so uh, um, on device learning, uh, uh, it, it's it's a thing of a you know today. If if, if companies can't do it, uh, they're already behind. Yeah, that's again. Uh the trends are beginning to kind of converge on that. Um, and pulling these together, effectively what we're saying is these things need to be smarter, not just the hardware itself, but the entire solution mindset with the models, the the storage, uh, the packaging, everything has to go with it. And the overall solution has to be more efficient and potentially distributed. And how do you see neuromorphic uh, techniques play in that? Um, I'm I'm actually going a little bit above that question and and kind of emphasize the uh, need for a complete package. Uh, neuromorphic is is very interesting uh, by itself, uh, but I would like to actually upsize that that uh, question and say uh, the the difference between an AI uh, uh, system level solution versus you know Ethernet or uh, wireless and stuff like that it, it, is that uh, you can't have uh, a, a good hardware without a very good software and vice versa. Uh, and, and the dilemma that I'm seeing here is that uh, the AI is, is actually being treated as a hardware problem uh, right now. And, and the software is kind of either punted to a, to a different company uh, or uh, it's left to the, you know, uh, exercises of the, the, the students, uh, quote unquote, uh, and, and that becomes uh, very hectic and, and, and very non-user friendly. Uh, anybody should be able to use AI at, at any level. Uh, and that basically means a very robust uh, um, system level solution, uh, hardware software system um, for, for everybody's use. So uh, we, can, we can add a neuromorphic uh, in, uh, in, in, into the equation, but I would like to actually not separate that and say, hey, the, the, the real problem is something that, that you can give me uh, at, at any level of uh, education that I have or any, any level of the activity that I'm doing and, and be able to uh, 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 steer my way around it. I think you hit the nail on the head. And in fact, thanks for upsizing that question because I couldn't agree more. AI is not a hardware problem. Yes. AI is a solution problem, which includes everything from hardware, software, and connectivity service as is needed to make that happen, right? And everything together has to think about uh, what is the best outcome. Um, which brings us to, you know, brain chip. You've kind of uh, graced our uh, booth and seen what we have on offer. We have solutions that could be used in automotive, in terms of retail, security, uh, uh, consumer devices, vision, voice, vibration, industrial. Um, what's your take so far? Um, I think I'm excited with what I'm seeing. Um, I, I have been involved with BrainChip uh, for about, a, I, I think, less than a year or maybe a year so far. Um, and um, I've been interacting with the, with the company uh, in, in terms of learning the capabilities and, and uh, uh, looking at uh, their space in, in, in Finian, uh platform. Um, it is very promising. Uh, I also think that there are certain areas that you're not um, uh, advertising uh, as best as you could, uh, kind of uh, underestimating yourselves. But uh, I, I think there is a very good uh, future uh, in, in brain chip, uh, uh, the technology that you're um, engaging. And uh, uh, I see uh, this to be closer to take the next leap than some other vendors that I'm uh, looking at. Uh, so uh, I congratulate you and uh, I'll, I'll uh, 
uh, I'll do my best to continue working with the company um, uh, closely in the future. Wow, that's that's a resounding statement and certainly um, room for improvement in how we position, how we move forward, how we execute going forward. But it's a good place to start, it sounds like. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you, Farshad. Thank you for your time and uh, thank you for your advice. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a great CES.